going to be doing some Draco Magician test hands using the deck that we profiled in my previous video. If you don't want to watch that video, you want a quick TLDR of what the deck is like. Basically, it's Pendulum Magicians with Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon. However, we abuse this card right here, Ignister Prominence, because it's a very good card and allows us to go into a lot more dragon plays. And you'll see a lot more about it if you don't know what it does when we go into the actual combos and do a lot of test hands and see what we can do. Also, I'm going to completely ignore the fact that my opponent could have hand traps and interruptions just to show you guys the highest ceiling this deck has. So we get Dark Worm, Master Pendulum, Servant, that's pretty cool. Uh, this is Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, and we get an Allure of Darkness. So, so far we have a pretty, it, it really depends what we draw off the Allure. And also, if you wonder where my hand is offset here, it's because there's a pretty nasty glare right there. So that's why I try to keep my hand over here, uh, even though it might be a little bit too bunched up. Uh, but this is the best I can do with the resources that I have. So anyway, we're going to scale the Servant first. And then what we're going to do here is, I'm going to use the Revolution Dragon effect first. So we'll take 500 life points. And we're going to search ourselves a Dragon Pendulum Monster. So... I think I'm going to actually get the Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon because that guarantees we have a high scale and we also have another option to alert darkness away uh, compared to getting say like a second Dark Worm which wouldn't do much or getting one of the other Draco Slayer monsters in the main deck which would have been light anyway which uh, means we'd have to alert away, alert away the uh, Dark Worm. So anyway let's alert darkness. We'll get a counter on our Servant of Endymion and we will get a Foolish Burial and a Harmonizing. That's actually really really good. Uh, but the thing is, now we have to banish something. So I'm going to actually banish the Dark Room here because we can just Foolish and get another one, which is totally fine. So we can Foolish here. Servant will go to two. We'll send our Dark Room. Dark Worm will summon itself because we play two Dark Worms in this deck. Uh, and then we will summon itself and we will get ourselves a gate zero to our hand. Now we have a low scale and a high scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon for an eight. Servant will go to three. We'll immediately summon it, bam. And this is what I was talking about in the combo at the end of the deck profile, uh, which works out really nicely. So the combo at the end of the deck profile I was doing yesterday, or the other video, whenever it was uploaded, is basically if you can get to two monsters on board with a harmonizing in hand and two dragons, which we have because we have Master Pendulum in hand, you are in a very, very good spot. And you can get there without normal summoning because Servant is just the hell of a card. So let's cut the deck and let us scale the gate zero here because we need to have these two cards in our hand. Um, so that means Mythical Beast Jackal King will go to three. And we can play around in Nibiru, play around Ash, they didn't Ash the Servant, which is fine. We can link these two and go into our Link 2 of choice, which in this case is going to be the Cross Sheep, not the IP Master. And I'm very happy, by the way, IP is going to be the Megatons. I'm going to splurge on those Megatons and get so many cards, even though I can't play IRL Yu Gi Oh! for at least a couple more months. But, you know, responsible Yu Gi Oh! players don't exist when it comes to spending money on cards, I guess. Anyway, so. Uh, we cannot pen summon the Servant from the extra deck. Some people get confused by that because sometimes I get comments like, hey, how come you didn't pen summon this? Uh, servant can only special summon once per turn. So since we special summon it from its own effect, we cannot pen summon it from the extra deck, unfortunately. Uh, it would be pretty cool if we could. But anyway, we're going to pen summon. We're going to summon the Dark Worm. We're going to summon the Master Pendulum to the zone here. And then we're going to go into Harmonizing. Harmonizing's effects can activate. And we're going to bring out our Black Thing. I like to bring out Black Thing first, typically, just because... I feel like Purple Poison is just a better card to have in the deck because the effect is better compared to Black Fang or Celestial Magician if you play Celestial Magician. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it's level 4 because you need to go for level 8 Synchro. So Black Fang will get banished when we Synchro with Harmonizing. We're going to go into our handy, dandy Ignister Prominence. Slowly becoming my favorite Synchro card. You know, Overthrowing Borlo, Savage Dragon, and Stardust Dragon. We're going to use the effect and here we're going to summon out the Luster. The reason why I like to summon Luster first typically is because uh, we're going to use it as Link Fodder. And Luster cannot be used for XYZ or Synchro unless it's with the Draco Slayer or for a Draco Slayer. Whereas the Vanilla is a Vanilla, so we can do anything we want with it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the Cross Sheep, we're going to take the Ignister, and we're going to take the, the Luster we just summoned, and we're going to go for a Link 4 into our Proxy Appaloosa, which you'll see in a second, with the three counters on it. So we have three negates. I cannot find my other die. I have this big die, but we'll just use this D20, I guess. Uh, if I can find, okay, screw it. This thing has three counters. <laughs> I'm not going to look around for, oh, here it is. It was right in front of me. Wow. There we go. Three counters. And then now we have no cards in hand. So it's, we can't really do the Romulus play because we can't discard a card. Uh, and there's really no way to get a card back to our hand. But what we're going to do first, we're going to go into Guard Dragon Pisty with the Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. going to use Pisty effect. We're going to summon out the Ignister. And then we're going to use Ignister's effect here. 
and we are going to summon out the last Draco Slayer boss that I'm playing. That's why I like to play three, because if you draw one, you still have two to play in the deck. If you desire to one away, you still have two to play in the deck. And even if Ignister is only able to get one out, you can still make pretty good boards, uh, provided you draw the other ones or banish them off desires or whatever. So now here we have a few options. So um, if you play Dynaster, Dynaster is the level eight Synchro or level eight Fusion, excuse me. Ignister monster what that thing does basically is the summoning requirement is two draco slayers so you just banish these two and then you summon the level eight Ignister fusion and then you can overlay the whole harbinger if you want um, i don't play that fusion though but what we're going to do here instead is we're going to link these two the Ignister and the pisty and we're going to go into romulus the reason why i play romulus by the way over something like hieratic seal is because hieratic seal's effect is only active in the extra monster zone and it's very rare we'll get it there whereas Romulus serves the same purpose of getting rid of the guard dragon so we can link it away but also gets you a plus one which can potentially get you into extension plays if you can get into galactic spiral dragon by discarding any random card uh, and then now here we're going to overlay these two and we're going to go into abyss dweller tornado dragon whatever you play i just play abyss dweller and the thing about this board is like it's pretty good because we have four monster negates and a uh interruption floodgate like monster and abyss roller so five negate or five interruptions so to say but the thing i don't like about putting up boards like this is i feel like going forward we really want to be able to stop spell cards because typically like yeah it's a lot of monster effects but you have those one or two spell cards that are just so so powerful you want to stop whereas with this hand i, I get lightning stormed i get dark ruler and i get i mean granted you can't respond to droplets i get droplets and i lose uh, which is why i like sodding the amorphage lechery and which is why i like putting up at least like one spell negate uh, whether it's the big endymion whether it's the vortex dragon or whatever but anyway let's get into their hand here and see what we can get out uh, let's see what we get this time hopefully we can go into something pretty cool i kind of want to go into a line of play that has selene and wow speaking of the devil we draw just our confit i swear i didn't do that on purpose which uh should help us get into selene the double mastery is kind of lame and drawing the sloth is kind of lame too geez um this might be a brick actually because mm, i'm trying to think i feel like this is just sloth pass because if we mastery and get servant, we don't have scales to pen summon. We can go into a, like an IP pass, but that does nothing because you have no other monster on board. Uh, or we can go for mastery and get the big Endymion, the mighty master. I, I have a bad habit of calling this guy just Endymion when they all have Endymion in the name. When I say Endymion, I typically mean this one. I know it's kind of a bad habit. But I'm really bad with card names, I know. Uh, so we're going to scale it and scale the purple poison. And then I guess we just pen summon sloth. And that's kind of why, like, people play like to play Sloth over Goliath is because in these really bad situations, you can pen summon Sloth versus pen summoning Goliath. I believe Goliath is level 8 or 9, maybe 10, but you can't pen summon it, and it's a 2 tribute, where it has 700 more attack. This one has 2250. Uh, they have advantage and disadvantages. I mean, this one, Sloth Pass against, like, Orcus, you could probably get there because Orcus main deck monsters don't do anything without the extra deck. Uh, but yeah, in general, that, that could have been good if, like, like, when I saw these two, I was like, oh, this is probably going to be a good hand. Uh, but yeah, and the thing about this hand, like, yeah, it's a brick, but if you look at this variant of the deck versus other variants of Pendulum Magician or Pendulum in general that are not playing the Nister stuff, they all play these cards anyway. Maybe they don't play just a Confit, maybe they play, like, an Abductor or they play Souls instead because Souls is better, just a lot more expensive. What I'm trying to say is, though, even though this deck can brick, a lot of times when you brick, it's not because of the variant, it's just because of the inherent nature of Pendulum and the cards you play and how it works because you need to have your scales. Then you have at least two monsters, and, and you need your five cards to be five good cards, which is why I play a lot of draw cards, a lot of search cards. Uh, but yeah, I, I can ramble about Pendulum forever because it's such an interesting theory for Yu-Gi-Oh! in my opinion. Anyway, Dulce Alliance, Pit, Servant, again, wow, we're pretty lucky with the Servant. Foolish, and Sky Iris. Ooh, this is a fun hand. There is so much we can do with this hand. Okay, so we're going to go for Servant right off the bat. Um... And I'm trying to think. So if I, I'm gonna dual lines for the pen call right away. Let's do that. Dual lines pen call. Um, and I think I might be able to summon the servant before I pen call, just to play around a hand trap. Which I know I said I'm not gonna really play. I'm not, what I'm gonna do is like typically when I do test hands, like with typically with mermails, which by the way mermail stuff coming soon again, is I like to show you guys like what happens if like I summon Diva and it gets ashed. Uh, but in this hand, I'm not going to assume that anything gets Ash, but I'm going to still try to play around hand traps if that makes any sense. Anyway, so now we have Foolish and Sky Iris, so we can get the three for sure in the Dragon Pit. Uh, so we can get the three counters for sure. So I'm going to Foolish first because this will get us another counter on our Servant. And then if the summon resolves, which we're going to assume it does, uh, we have the low scale in the Gate Zero, which is going to help us a lot. 
So now I'm going to actually just, act, I think I'm going to, now the thing is, if I activate the Sky Iris, am I going to use Sky Iris this turn? I don't think I am. So instead of just activating the Sky Iris, I'm going to scale the Dragon Pit. Now the downside of scaling the Dragon Pit is I'm not going to be able to go into a rank 7 play, but granted if I summon the Jackal King off the Servants, I'm not going to be able to go for a rank 7 play anyway and get Vortex out, which I would like to do because Vortex is uh, an Omni to gate, kind of like Savage Dragon, because it's going to get more than just monster effects. But um, I think I just have to... See, I, kind of, I really want to go for a Vortex play, which I know is probably not the best play. Uh, you know what? I'm going to activate the Sky Iris. So I'll put Sky Iris here. Hopefully you guys can see that. This will go to 3 and we're going to summon itself right away. And we're going to summon out... Actually... You know what? No. It doesn't make sense to do that because then I went to... Yeah. Sorry, I'm backtracking a bit. We're going to definitely scale the Dragon Pit instead of acting Sky Iris, and I'll explain why in a second. So the end board's going to be very similar to last hand. Uh, the reason why I wanted to Sky Iris, and, and, or not Sky Iris, and have the card in hand, is because I want to go for a rank 7 play uh, into the Vortex Dragon, and then also potentially a rank 8 play if I discard this off the Romulus, because uh, I needed the car extra card in hand, but uh, you know, it doesn't even matter. Uh, anyway, so we're going to scale this, um, and then now, actually, we kind of have to activate Pen Call now. Yeah, let's pen call for the Sky Iris. Discard the Sky Iris? Or do I Sky Iris and try to pop something? There's really no point in trying to pop something, is there? Also, we play Pendulum, trying to activate stuff in the scales. I know I just did that. Uh, I want to pen call, discard Sky Iris. I feel like no matter what, I'm not going to be able to get the extra card in hand. Actually, maybe I am. Because we just need Harmonizing in the low scale. Being the purple poison. Um... And then I want to scale something here. So I guess I scale the purple poison. See, the issue comes up again with, with uh, Servant not being able to be pen summoned. Because we special summoned it, basically. So we're going to link two. We'll go to cross sheet. Um, well, this would have went to three counters. So I want to act with the scale first before I uh, linked. So we have the monster negate on board. Because they could because we could have just linked before acting the scale. And then they could drop Nibiru, which would have been really bad. Uh, and then now we pen summon. So we summon this, the Dark Worm. We'll summon the Harmonizing. And you know what? I'm going to keep this in hand. I'm going to go for the rank 8 play for the Hope Harbinger. So we're going to use the effect of Harmonizing Magician that's going to bring out our Black Thing Magician. And then we're going to immediately Synchro Summon and go into our ser uh, Servant, our Ignister Prominence. Ignister's effect is going to activate. And we are going to bring out our Luster Pendulum. We're going to link four into Appaloosa. So now we have four negates on board. All monster negates though, and three of them are on Appaloosa. See, the thing about like putting up multiple negate boards, and I've talked about this in the past, is like, unless you're putting up like six plus negates, I don't like having three of them on the Appaloosa because it's just so easy to out the one card compared to having separate cards with the negates. Whereas if you have six negates and three on the Appaloosa, if they out the Appaloosa, you still have three. It's not that bad versus outing them and only having two. I feel like that's a pretty big difference because they waste a card and then you have three interruptions versus wasting a card and having only two. Uh, maybe that makes no sense to you. Maybe I'm not making any sense at all. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but we have three interruptions or three counters, whatever. Uh, we're going to take the Dark Worm. Now, if we really wanted to, against certain matchups, we could just go straight to LP here and bring out the Sloth. Like, against really monster-heavy decks. Like, if this is, like, game two or three and we know our opponent is really playing spell cards, they're playing, like, Sekka BA, even though Sekka's at one, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we could just sloth, boom, we kind of win the game there. But uh, assuming we don't know if they're playing, we're going to go for Pisty, go for as many gates as possible, bring back the Ignis to Prominence. Ignis to Prominence's effect is going to activate, and we're going to bring out, not from the extra deck, from the main deck, we're going to bring out our Luster, or Master rather. And then now here, I could go into Romulus. Actually, I like to leave the Ignister on board. So we can put away the vanilla. So we can go to Romulus here. Romulus will get us the field spell, being the Dragon Ravine. We're going to immediately activate the Dragon Ravine. And we're going to discard... Where's the Dragon? There we go. And um, we're going to discard our... It's for King Gate Zero. We can send the Galactic Spiral Dragon. And we cannot bring the Spiral Dragon back. I just realized that. Because we don't have light and dark dragons. I just realized that. So we kind of flubbed there a little bit, uh, but we still get to forward our options, which isn't terrible. Uh, I'm trying to think how I messed that up, though. I couldn't have gotten to the ravine before Romulus. 
Yeah, I, I messed that up a bit. I, I could have played that a bit differently. Um, I should have just went to LP there, because I would have had no way to go to Galactus Barrel Dragon. Uh, but anyway, you know, you do the testing and you learn. That's the whole point of me doing these videos. You guys can help me, I can hopefully help you in showing you guys some of my ideas with Pendulum. And we can go from there. Uh, one thing that I, I, you guys have to realize, too, if you watch the deck profile, is I mentioned then, too, that Selene doesn't really come up a lot. And you notice that Selene really hasn't come up, which is why I'm, like, really considering just putting Selene to one or just cutting it entirely. Um, I, I feel like I can't bring myself to cut the card entirely because Selene is just too good, but it just does not come up enough. And it's it's a problem. I don't know. And, and I do want to go back testing, like, a more pure Endymion route once I order some cards. So once the Megatons come out, like I said before, I'm going to order so many cards so I can properly build pure endymion and not have proxies for my appaloosa for my ip for my selenes because ip and appaloosa are going to be the megatons and hopefully be cheap and i'm ready to i'm ready to spend money on that megaton man on those singles because my birthday is coming up too and i haven't bought like Yu-Gi-Oh cards in so long so <laughs> besides like the ten dollars i spent to finish my draco pal deck which was ten dollars so i mean whatever anyway gate zero dark worm that's not a good start alert darkness spiral drive Ooh. I'm gonna get the servant again. It's like three times. Um, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I don't think we're gonna get to much with this hand, unfortunately. So we're gonna activate the servant immediately. We're gonna alert darkness. So we're going to get a single counter on our servant, and we're gonna draw two cards. Dual slice. That's that saved us, I think. And another alert. I'm gonna have to banish the dark room. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna banish the Dark Worm. Um, no, actually, what am I doing? I can't banish the Dark Worm because I want to pen call it away. I'm gonna banish the Gate Zero. I'm kind of greedy here. I want to save the Sprawl Dragon because I want to go to Hulk Harbinger. <laughs> and then we're going to go for Duelist Alliance. Servant will go to two. We will get a Pendulum Call. Now, if Pen Call gets Ashed here, that's kind of bad because we can't really end on much if that happens we're gonna have to like be forced to alert and see what we get into uh but we're gonna assume that doesn't happen we're gonna pen call dark worm one of the best plays in the deck really and we're going to get ourselves a harmonizing and we're going to get ourselves a low scale um in the purple poison i feel like i definitely should have banished you know what i'm backtracking i hate doing this i 100 percent should have banished the galactic spiral dragon because I can guarantee scales if I do it this way. And I get the Black Fang too, because I have the low and high scale here and I can summon the Harmonizing Magician. And I'll have the Dark Room coming back. I only play one Gate Zero, so I can't search another one. Uh, and then I can use Servant's Effect and get ourselves two monsters on board and be able to go for our Link 2 play. Because getting to your Link 2s before you pen summon is, is how you can put up the better boards typically uh, with Pendulum, at least this right. All right, so now, I'm tempted to be greedy and alert, but the thing is, if I learn to purple poison, then my I have nothing to summon up harmonizing, really. And that's not good. Uh, but if I learn to like a big endymion, that would be pretty cool. So we're going to link two. And here we're going to go into the cross sheep again, because we're not going to use it in this play. And then we're going to scale our Scream King Dark Worm, or Scream King Gate Zero, and our Black Fang Magician. And oh, see, this is so unfortunate because I'm going to be able to get into Romulus, but I had to banish the Spiral Dragon. Because <laughs> I'm going ha to have the discard, but uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. So I guess now we pence. I feel like I've just done literally the same play three turns in a row, too. Uh, which wasn't my intention, because typically I praise Pendulum decks for being non-linear, and here I am going for pretty much the same exact board three times in a row. <laughs> but we're going to use Harmonizing's Effect. That is going to bring out the purple. Uh, and then we're going to Synchro, I guess. Poison gets banished. Harmonize into the extra deck. Ignister. Ignister is going to bring out Luster. Where's my Luster? There's my Luster. Um, now what if I go to... I can't go to Selene, actually. Because, um, Jow King... I wouldn't want to link away the Jow King, because Selene needs a Spellcaster. I was testing, actually... Uh, before I was playing more of a Draco variant, when I was playing more Pendulum Magicians, I was testing Wee Witch Magician because Wee Witch Magician is the most generic spellcaster Link 2 because it requires two darks. And that card you could like Link 2, just leave it on board, and then link it with like anything else, and then go to Selene a lot easier. I feel like that's actually a pretty decent Link 2 to play. I feel like it might be better than Daybreaker because Daybreaker doesn't really do much unless you have to like link away your Servant with only one counter and Jackal King, get the counter back. Either way, um, we're going to go to Appaloosa again. And this just shows you, like, 
you know, Appaloose is pretty important to this deck, so I'm very happy it's getting reprinted because next time I roll up to locals, I'm gonna actually have a real copy of Appaloosa. I would have preferred the gold one, not gonna lie, I love gold rares, that's why I have the, uh, you know, the gold rare luster and the gold rare ignister here. But uh, I will take a Mega Tin, whatever rarity it is. I hope it's a low rarity too, because having like a common or rare one would be so funny. Uh, and I'm gonna link this into Dark I doubt it'll be common. Maybe rare. That would be funny though. Into Pisty. Pisty's effect is going to activate. Bring back the Ignister. Ignister's effect is gonna activate again. Wow, Konami. Even though this card is at one, it doesn't even matter because I can use this effect three times in a turn if I really wanted to. Um, and then now here. I think we just go to Romulus to get this out of the way. It would be so cool, if, but you can't, if you just go to IP right there. Like if I could summon IP right there instead, my board would be way better. Uh, granted, I would have the Sloth out too, so I couldn't really use IP as effectively, but it would just make me feel better. And we're gonna like the Master, and we're gonna summon out LP, and then LP's effect is gonna activate, and we're going to summon out the Sloth. So again, we end on a board that pretty much means our opponent can't use monster effects, but they can still play spells. Uh, which is which is really a, a point that I'm struggling with this deck. I feel like this deck, if you go back to when I was playing like a pure Draco Pal build, as much as I've like improved it and try to fine tune it, you know, we we figure out a way to put more on our options. We figured out a way to play around Nibiru, and now the struggle is playing around spell or <laughs> that can break our board, and or actually putting up spell negates, I should say, and uh, playing through like hand traps because I feel like my variant with the Dracos it's it's more susceptible to hand traps versus say pure endymion with the more spell counter focus or even like a more traditional pen magician revolution dragon deck that is not playing the dracos uh, and playing like abductors and stuff like that so yeah i guess that's gonna be it for today um unfortunately it was like the same combo like three times but i'm sure you guys can see the plays if you if you saw the deck profile if you saw the hands i was doing if there was a better line of play i could have made please 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 let me know because i love when people do that because uh, it helps me and it helps you guys as well. So thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Mermail deck coming soon after the Megatons probably. I'll see you guys next time. And bye bye.